All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the teleconference for December 3rd, 2020. This is the Library Facilities Financing Authority LFFA board meeting. It starts at nine o'clock. Immediately following that will be the Library Joint Powers Authority board meeting at about 9.15. These meetings will run back to back. To join this webinar using a telephone only, dial any of the following numbers. I'll read two of them aloud. 1-888-788-0099. And then slowly enter the webinar ID of 992-2655-5978. As an attendee, your microphone is muted for the entire presentation unless you follow the process for public comments. You do not need a microphone, camera, or a screen if you only want to listen to the meeting as this meeting is accessible by landline or mobile phone. If you need assistance, please call the library's telephone information line at 1-831-427 7713. The board will take public comments as outlined in the posted agenda and in the next slides. All written comments must include the agenda item number and be received prior to the close of public comment on that agenda item. If you're joining by computer, you may use the Q&A feature to type your comments. On the attendee control bar near the bottom of the screen, you'll see the Q&A icon. You may also use the raise hand icon to raise your hand. The moderator will either call your name or announce the last three digits of your phone number when it's your turn. State your name and then you'll have three minutes of speaking time. If you're using a mobile device, the Q&A icon and the raise hand icons likely appear near the top corner of the screen. If you've called into this meeting using a telephone only, you may raise your hand by pressing star nine on your keypad. The moderator will call out the last three digits of your phone number when it is your turn to comment. Press star six to unmute yourself. You will have three minutes of speaking time. Alternatively, you may call the library's telephone information line to timely submit your comments at 1-831-427-7713. These will be read by the moderator. Once the board meeting begins, if you're joining by computer to see all panelists, you may need to use the Zoom control bar and select gallery view. Depending on the size of your mobile device screen, you may need to scroll over to view whoever is speaking. And finally, if you are accessing this meeting via a Chromebook or a web browser only, you may not see all of the panelists at one time, only the panelists speaking. The chair of the board, Jamie Goldstein, will now call the meeting to order, transitioning to gallery view. Please stand by. Chair Goldstein, over to you. Thank you, Moderator Jones. Good morning and welcome to the Santa Cruz Libraries Facility Financing Authority regular board meeting. Can we have a roll call, please? Yes, and this is Kira Hennepin. I'm sitting in for Helga Smith, who's on vacation. So, um, different voice. So, Chair Goldstein? Here. Vice Chair Bernal? Here. Board Member Friend? Here. And Board Member Palacios? Here. Okay, do we have any additional materials for today's meeting? We do not. All right. Any changes to today's agenda? I do not. Okay, that will take us to oral communications. Oral communications is an opportunity for anyone from the public to address this board on anything within its jurisdiction, but not on today's agenda. Moderator Jones, do we have any oral communications this morning? Chair Goldstein, we do not. Okay, I'll close public comment then and take us to executive director report. Uh, director Nimitz, what have you got for us this morning? Well, the projects keep moving forward in sometimes very exciting ways. I am so happy to report we have a new roof at the Scotts Valley Library um, just in time for the rains. We're very, very excited about that. We also have a new HVAC system. Um, Boulder Creek has started construction. Capitola and La Salva Beach are really moving to almost a closing phase, uh, finishing the projects up. And we hope to get access to those buildings so the libraries can start moving in after the first of the year. Um, we will be going uh, and seeking approval to bid out the Live Oak project um, in January with the county board. We expect the annex um, project to go to the county board in March. Um, Boulder Creek and Felton, I do want to mention, are in the evacuation zones. 
um, for debris flow. So we're keeping an eye on that. Um, particularly with Felton, we're just making sure the staff is up to date about what's happening and developing the appropriate emergency procedures. Um, I do wanna say we have had to close Scotts Valley uh, sometimes uh, just for moments of construction that will probably occur again over the next three months. We'll be repaving the parking lot and doing an earthquake retro retrofit. Um, so there'll be small closures, but we don't expect a large closure for Scotts Valley. The good news is uh, the projects are moving forward um, and we're making real progress. It's very exciting. Great. Thank you, Susan. Do any uh, directors have any comments or updates on their projects? Seeing none, thank you, Susan. We're very excited in Capitola too. I think by the next time we meet, our building will be done, I hope. That's our target. The construction will be done, but we still have to move in. Uh, yes, no, I know there's, there's plenty of work to do after the construction is done. Okay, so that takes us to the next item on today's agenda, which is the consent calendar. Um, does anyone want to pull anything off consent? Uh, seeing none, is there a motion? I'll move approval of the consent calendar items A, B, and C. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Chair Member Goldstein. Uh, aye. Vice Chair Bernal. Aye. Board Member Friend. Aye. And Board Member Palacios. Yes. Okay, so the consent calendar is approved. That takes us to item seven on our agenda this morning, general business. Item A is the 2019-2020 Community Facilities District Reports. Uh, do we have a staff presentation? Edith prepared these, but I think it's pretty straightforward. Edith, unless you have anything else you would like to comment on. I just want to uh, appreciate that everyone was able to get them in very timely this year. Often they're prepared by the external auditors that you hire, so that helps. And again, it is a mandate based upon the agreement that was uh, part of the agreement when you were originally formed. Thank you. Okay. So we have a... Mo so, so sorry, are there any questions on this item? Seeing none, we will go out to public comment. Does anyone from the public wish to comment on item 7A? Here, Goldstein, we have a public comment on the director's report. I'm not sure if we missed it or if we're still in it, but there is a member of the public who'd like to comment. Sure. Well. Technically, the director's report is not something that we take public comment on. There's no action on it, so it's just an oral report. But I will note that the community facilities district reports does cover uh, many of the same issues that the director covered in her oral report, as it has to do with spending money on these branches. So if somebody wishes to make public comment on item, item 7A, I think they would be more than welcome to do, to do so. All right. Hang on just a moment. Jean, your line is open. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm a bit confused if you, do, do the board members have uh, a printed copy of today's agenda or are they viewing it on their screens because I want to refer to a page number uh, under the director's report? Do you, are you, how do the board members see a page number that I refer to? Jean? Jean, you should probably make your comment. I think each board member probably has a different mechanism of viewing the agenda packet. Oh, okay, thank you. Well, I'm referring to page 14 on the library facilities um, uh, uh, report uh, that was in the, um, I'm sorry, the director's report. I don't understand the math. It shows the uh, measure S um, allocations uh, the bond disbursement so far, the special tax, I guess that's our quarter cent sales tax. And then it so shows on the uh, right hand column what is remaining to be dispersed. And I take it that the only thing that's remaining is for the city of Santa Cruz 
um, to be dispersed. And the figure is 23, about 23 and a half million, 23 million 573. If I'm, the reason I don't understand is because we knew that for the uh, downtown library, we had $27 million allocated. And then Brands of Forty in Garfield received a million and a half, that left 25 and a half million. And so I'm wondering if this 23 and a half million is all for the downtown library. And if so, how does the public see an accounting of how the uh, a one and a half million has been sent, spent so far on the downtown library to date? So that's my, my basic question. How can the public see an accounting of the money that was spent on the downtown library where it's delineated um, that should apparently add up to uh, about a million and a half dollars so far. I hope that makes sense. Um, my question, maybe the, uh, I'm not sure if the director can, can explain um, that to you or, anyway, that's my question. <laughs> I'm confused. Um, uh, Jean, I think it, I, the best way to do this is do a public records request and um, we'll give you all the information about how the Measure S money has been spent in the city of Santa Cruz, I would do it to the city of Santa Cruz. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there anybody else who wishes to address this board on item seven? Hey. Chair Goldstein, I don't see uh, any other comments at this time from the public. Okay, thank you. So I'll close public comment and bring it back to the board for discussion and a motion. I'll move approval of the item. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve, accept and file the annual community facilities district report for this recently ending fiscal year. Uh, can we have a roll call please? Chair Member Goldstein. Aye. Vice Chair Bernal. Aye. Board Member Friend. Aye. Board Member Palacios. Yes. Okay, the motion carries unanimously. So that takes us to item 7B, which is the proposed annual meeting schedule for calendar year 2021. Susan, do you have a staff report? I believe you're muted. Yes, <laughs> the statement of the year. Um, please turn to page 27 of your board packet. We're proposing uh, at this point a virtual meeting schedule. We'll be happy to change it um, if we get to a place where we can safely meet. Um, and really it's designed around, in many cases, the budget so that we can have appropriate conversations about the budget. Our next meeting would be February 4th. Okay, bring it to the board. Are there any questions on this item? Uh, seeing none, Moderator Jones, do we have any public comment on our um, meeting schedule? Chair Goldstein, there are no public comments on the meeting schedule. Okay, bring it back to the board for discussion. Is there any discussion on this item? I, I would like to just briefly toss out that with the Zoom meetings, is six o'clock the best time for everybody to meet? I think we had originally designed the six o'clock to give board members time to travel uh, to remote library locations. And under the virtual scenario that um, that probably is open for discussion. So I for one would be perfectly happy moving it forward a little bit. I know that the six o'clock meeting was kind of set around people being able to travel to attend meetings in different places around the county. And we were trying to have a few night meetings a year at different locations to, to do that, to kind of get out into the community more. And so, but with the virtual meeting, I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, and I don't know, I for one would prefer ending a little bit earlier in the evening if we could. So I guess I would propose moving up from a six o'clock start to a five o'clock start, unless nobody else is interested. 
That's fine with me. I think the rationale is sound. We're not traveling and the 5 p.m. still allows people who might be working until five to be able to participate after their work day. So I'd, I'd be supporting that as well. Fine with me. All right. Well, we have a motion. Oh, so do we have a motion then? Um, so I will move. Um, uh, I will move that we adopt the proposed annual meeting schedule for 2021, except for we move the starting times for the March 4th, June 3rd, and October 7th meetings to start at 5 p.m. instead of 6 p.m. And I'll note the other meetings start at 9 a.m. All right, great. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. A motion and a second. Um, can we have a roll, roll call vote, please? Chair Member Goldstein? Aye. Vice Chair Bernal? Aye. Board Member Friend? Aye. Board Member Palacios? Yes. Okay, so that motion carries unanimously. We have a schedule for 2021. We're all looking forward to the new year. Um, with that, sorry, I'm skipping back because I'm using a digital form of our agenda packet. I would, um, I would like to just point out that at the February meeting, we'll be selecting new officers. We have a rotation schedule. So um, the next chair elect will be Martine Bernal and vice chair will be Tina Friend. Okay. Well, I will eagerly, I will hand over the reins. We'll have a smooth transition of power in February, I assume. <laughs> or you could fight it. It's going to be fraud, I'm pretty sure. No. <laughs> okay. So that takes us to adjournment. Uh, I will adjourn this meeting until our next scheduled meeting, which is February 4th at 9 a.m. And that will bring us to our, uh, sorry. And I have to find the right, there we go, this agenda packet. Oh, the agenda for the Santa Cruz City County Libraries Joint Powers Authority Board Meeting. That brings us to the first item, call to order. I will note that the same members are present as at the previous meeting. All members are here. And that takes us then to additional materials. Any additional material for uh, today's meeting? Susan. There is not. Okay. Any additions and deletions? There is not. All right. Moderator Jones, do we have anybody who wish, wishes to make oral communications on items that are uh, not on today's agenda, but within the purview of the Joint Powers Authority? Chair Goldstein, I do believe there's a public comment. Hold a moment, please. Jean, go ahead. And thank you again. Um, uh, as a member of the public, and because there is a lot, a lot included in the director's report, I'm requesting that the public always be able to speak to the board uh, during that agenda item. I just think it makes a lot of sense. It welcomes the public. It allows the public to be engaged. It doesn't really matter to us whether it's an action item or not. Um, so that's my request and I hope you will consider that positively. Thank you very much. I also, um, no, well, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm done. Thank you, Jean. Is there any further public comment? Chair Goldstein, I, there are no further public comments at this time. All right. So that takes us to a uh, report by library director, Director Nimitz. Um, we have begun our library grab, grab and go um, service model with public computing and expanded service hours. Our entire staff has new schedules and new assignments. And this was accomplished after much union discussion, particularly around workload and safety. I do wanna say that the library staff was recognized last, time, last night as um, hometown heroes for the work they've done through the fires and COVID. Um, it's an honor to work with this staff. Uh, they're energetic. Um, and hardworking and dedicated, but they've proven to be really 
um, agile and innovative at the same time. And I'm really proud that they were recognized in this way. And that's all I have. Great. Thank you, Susan. Uh, and at the public's request, I will open it up. Is there any public comment on this item? Chair Goldstein, I believe there's a public comment. Jean, go ahead. Good morning, thank you. <clears throat> uh, on this, I have a, just a question, a general question to the board. And since I can see all of your faces, good morning, um, a, uh, a nod of acknowledgement would be um, sufficient for me. I'm wondering if uh, you all had a chance to read the email that I sent to you yesterday regarding the organizational chart, which is found in the, uh, in, under the director's report also. The organizational chart uh, that shows the, um, uh, the JPA board, the director, the library advisory commission. Um, I sent you an email yesterday, uh, was uh, explanatory of the confusion that the current organizational chart um, shows. So I'm wondering, uh, did any of you have a chance to, to read that? Uh, to show of hand would be fine. And if not, I'll, I'll continue. Did anyone read it? Gene, Gene, public comment isn't intended as a interactive process with board members. My recommendation would be to make your comment. Okay. Uh, my, well, <laughs> I sent an email to the board and I thought it made a lot of sense to me. I sent copy it also to Susan Nemitz and I'm hoping that the board at some point will uh, take up that matter in terms of making it less confusing and making it more, um, more accurate about the relationship between the JPA, the Library Advisory Commission, and the director. So I'm hoping that if you didn't have a chance to read it, you will take the time to read it and, and contemplate. I, I think it's a good suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Okay, so that takes us to item six on today's agenda, which is the report by friends. Uh, do we have somebody from the friends here today? Just so we do. Hang on, just a this moment. This is some huge. Well, it is. They're dealing with multi-million dollars. Martine, I'm going to move you over. Hello, can you hear me? We can, Martin. Okay, good morning, everybody. And thank you for giving us a moment on the agenda. Uh, Martin Gomez from the Friends of the Santa Cruz Public Libraries. We just have a couple of items to bring you up to date on. Um, one is uh, we have closed our bookstore operations at the downtown branch library. Uh, this was uh, done in order to um, uh, accommodate some of the needs for the library with respect to their um, check and go, uh, a pick up and go, what I'm not sure what it's called, but uh, so that the, the staff can have access to that space. But in addition, uh, our uh, bookstore operations had really gone into um, remission because of uh, it was all volunteer run and a lot of our volunteers could no longer uh, provide the kind of volunteer staffing and support for that operation. I will say, however, that there is one operation that remains in place and that's the Capitola chapter has a uh, bookstore operation going on at the uh, Capitola Mall. So uh, we're able to refer people to that location for donations and also for book sales. And uh, by the way, their book sale operation is going pretty well for the holiday season at this time. The other item I wanted to mention is that we were able to write uh, some significant checks to the library for collections over the last year. In particular, uh, we wrote a, a nice check for the e-resources collections. Uh, that was a, a response from the public to our campaign for additional e-resources for students and uh, teachers and families uh, while students were learning at school. So we're pleased to, uh, to have done that. And the last thing is some other good news. Uh, we received a significant request from a retired librarian um, and that uh, request was uh, $160,000. So we're very pleased to have received that. And for those of you who are considering, considering plan giving in the future, you might want to consider the Friends of the Santa Cruz Public Libraries. That concludes my report. 
I had, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. And I just, I just want to add that um, one of the things that East Resource uh, Funds have allowed us to do is buy um, classroom copies so that um, instead of having a single copy of the Grapes of Wrath, we have multiple copies so a whole classroom can experience um, a book at, at a single time. And that's been really helpful to us with our partnerships with the school district. So I'm very grateful to the friends for taking on that initiative at this really important time. Uh, Chair Goldstein, I don't have any questions, but I just wanted to thank Martine and the other members of the Friends for being so active uh, during this very difficult time. I know it's very difficult um, to continue to do the work, but uh, you have done that and we're very appreciative and I uh, wanted to make sure you knew that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director Palacios. Yeah, I would like to echo that comment and, and also really congratulations on the it's $160,000 donation. That's, that's really something else, that's neat. Yes, thank you, sir. Okay, so if there's no further discussion, that'll take us to item seven, which is the report by the Library Advisory Commission. I believe we have a chair, new chair for the Library Advisory Commission who's on the meeting. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Lindsay Bass and um, with uh, Bob White's passing, I've stepped in as chair of the Library Advisory Commission. I have a brief report to make to you all today. Um, the commission last met on Monday, November 16th via Zoom teleconference and at its meeting, the commission reviewed and made two key motions as part of its general business agenda, which I'd like to briefly review those items with you today. The first item discussed recommended next steps pertaining to library operations under COVID-19. The commission reviewed new service model details and discussed next steps, which included a host of issues, including um, issues around safety and workload, grab and go services, computer and Wi-Fi checkout services, preparations for Garfield and brand supported construction, reopening of the La Selva Capitola branches, and then planning for the downtown library branch. Um, the LAC found these recommendations to represent significant work and thoughtfulness. Um, the group also found that recommendations aim to balance access to services for the widest array of users while placing public and staff safety as a top priority. Um, grounded in best practice and science, the plans presented and the next steps outlined were unanimously supported by commissioners. Let me just also say that given the changes to the number of cases of COVID-19 in our community, the situation continues to be incredibly dynamic. During the meeting, commissioners shared their support and gratitude to the efforts made by Library Director Nimitz, Assistant Director Howard, and the entire library staff in continuing to adapt and find creative solutions for providing library services to our community during this very difficult time. The second item discussed was a recommendation to release $400,000 to the Santa Cruz Public Libraries for staffing and collections in anticipation of changes in service levels resulting from the remodeling and new construction of branches. Um, given the positive sales tax outlook um, that was presented and the constraints of current staffing levels, the commission found the requested funds to be a prudent addition of necessary resources to support activities related to capital projects at various branches and voted unanimously to support the recommendation. This concludes my report and I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, are there any uh, questions for Lindsay Bass? And I just wanna um, say thank you, Lindsay. Um, you can see that we're attracting top talent to the advisory commission um, and we're uh, very lucky to have these amazing concerned citizens to sort of grope through the details with us. Um, it really does help us shape uh, our recommendations to this board. Okay, well, thank you. Okay, that takes us to item A, which is comment by board members. Any board members have any comments this morning? I have one comment, uh, Chair Goldstein. I just want to, say what many have said is we've been through just an extraordinary time and dealt with almost unthinkable circumstances. So I wanna convey the, the board's appreciation, my appreciation to Susan, to Eric, to the whole team um, for all that you've done, the, the many, many changes and adaptations. And we continue to see that. 
And I'm still just still so astounded by the, the energy and the enthusiasm to embrace change and try new things and accept when things don't work so well and move on to something else. You know, like moving through that failure into new creation has really been remarkable to see. And I know everyone's working so, so hard. So I just want to say I, I see it. Um, the board sees it. We're very grateful for everyone. So Susan and Eric, if you could convey that to everyone in your staff. Uh, please do. And then a special note from Scotts Valley. Um, we did have a lot of changes. The construction had some little twists and turns. We had to open and close a few times. And I really want to applaud Laura, Linda, and the staff at Scotts Valley for their work to respond sometimes within hours to unexpected things happening and having to shift operations. So again, that resilience when it's been such a difficult year is so appreciated. So with my thanks, glad that we're moving through 2020 and into 2021. Okay, thank you, Director Friend. Are there any other comments by board members? Uh, seeing none, that'll take us to the consent calendar. Uh, all the items listed on the consent calendar can be taken up in one action. Does anyone want to pull any items from consent? Uh, seeing none, is there a motion? Uh, I'll move approval of the consent calendar items A through H. Is a motion, is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call, please? Chair Member Goldstein? Aye. Vice Chair Bernal? Aye. Board Member Friend? Aye. And Board Member Palacios? Yes. Okay, the motion carries unanimously. That takes us to general business. Uh, the first item on today's uh, general business is Item A, library operational recommendations under COVID-19. Do we have a staff report, please? Uh, on page 97 of the board packet, you'll see our latest recommendations. And I uh, must smile that the environment keeps evolving from when we even wrote the board packet. Um, there's just a lot more detail about our grab and go lobby service and computer services, how it works and the expansion of ours. Um, we feel really good about this model long-term in that it really allows us a lot of flexibility um, to provide services even as we move through tiers. Um, what it doesn't fully contemplate is a shelter in place order again. Um, the library staff, uh, uh, the library services are considered part of retail under the state's tiered scheme. And it is, um, so, so we're waiting patiently, like I think many of you, about uh, to hear what the governor's going to have to say and whether we're going to move into a shelter in place. My recommendation in the short run is that we continue our grab and go lobby service. Um, if uh, retail organizations are allowed to stay open, but I believe we should probably in the current environment close our computer operations. Um, we really do believe that the computer programs and services are important to a, our clientele, um, but I think the risk involved um, in having people in the building for longer periods of time um, is heightened with that particular service. Um, my hope is to wait and see how the current situation evolves, but I do believe we may have to contract that particular service at least through the next three weeks uh, as COVID peaks in our community. The other thing I just need to say is um, the stress of this is uh, causing a lot of change still with the workforce. Um, we've had three retirements in the last two weeks. Um, we have had a number of people who have been exposed to COVID in their homes and are under quarantine. And the level of employees that are calling in sick is going up rather dramatically right now. Um, so we are in a position, again, of having difficulty staffing this level of service as outlined here. Uh, in May, you gave me the ability to expand and contract. I want you to know we are committed to public services and understand how valued they are. Um, but we do have, um, we are struggling with the current environment as the pandemic grows within the community. 
Um, I do want to point out in particular, because it sets us up for the next discussion, um, our next steps of things we need to work on. Um, we need to continue to work with the union on issues of safety and workload. And we've been spending a great deal of time um, with staff concerns about safety and workload. And I don't see that going away in the near future. Um, we wanna solidify our grab and go model of services. Um, we're still tweaking it. Um, we are in the process of implementing our computer and Wi-Fi checkout program. Um, in the next two months, we have to completely empty Garfield Park and Branch of 40. We have to open La Salva Beach and Capitola in the spring. We have to close Aptos. We're likely to close Aptos slightly early from when construction begins because of staffing shortages. It's likely um, to close when Capitola opens. And then we are heavily involved in planning the downtown branch as that multi-use project begins to move forward. So we have a lot of uh, work to do that goes above and beyond sort of the daily day-to-day -day operations of running the library. Um, with this report, what I would like is uh, you to review and endorse our operational recommendations under COVID-19 so that we can continue to move forward. Okay, Susan, are there any questions from any members of the board? Um, seeing none, do we have any public comment on this item, um, Dr. Jones? Uh, Chair Goldstein, we do have two public comments. Judy Gunstra, go ahead. You may need to unmute yourself, Judy. Judy, I'll come back to you. Jean, go ahead. Jean, you may need to unmute yourself. Well, Chair Goldstein, we seem to be having trouble with our public comment. Well, let's let's bring it back to the board. Are there any, I'm not closing public comment yet, but let's bring it back to the board for any discussion and then we can circle back and see if we can get public comment to work. Uh, is there any discussion from members of the board on this item? Well, I'll, I'll just uh, comment on a couple of things. One is the, uh, on the operational concerns, I do agree that we're just gonna have to be flexible because no one knows uh, what the governor is going to come out with in terms of the shelter in place. Uh, one thing we do know is that it won't be the same as in March. He's made it clear that it's gonna be some kind of modified um, program and we just don't know what the restrictions are gonna be. So we'll just have to, all, uh, all of us are gonna adapt quickly. Um, I know that um, the idea is that it'll come out before the end of the week, I think. So we're, you know, by, so either today or tomorrow, we think. <laughs> That's obviously, we're getting close. Uh, the other thing is that this item is the one with uh, the uh, organizational chart issue that I saw is, is on this one. And so I'm, I think it was a good point uh, that uh, a member of the public raised and just the clarity of that. So I'm assuming we'll, we'll address that, you'll address that at some point. Susan, in terms of um, modifying that. Thank you. Okay, is there any other comment on this item before we get a motion? Chair Goldstein, yeah. should we try public comment again? Yeah, all I was just gonna say was I was gonna reiterate, um, I think Carlos made, made good points. And in addition, I do think the member of the public's pointing out the way that the org chart depicts the uh, advisory commission um, probably needs to be revised. So I'd be happy to work with the library director, um, if you want any assistance in how to recategorize it. So with that, let's let's go back and see if we have any public comment. All right, Judy Grunsha, go ahead. Judy, if you'd like to make your public comment, you will need to unmute yourself. Oh, okay, good morning. Um, yeah, I was trying to both call in, type, and you know, communicate in any way I can because I'm never quite sure that this is getting an you know, effective way of communicating with um, any of these Zoom meetings. So thank you. Um, yeah, my, uh, although I'm not allowed to ask it in a question form, I will state that the organization chart 
is something I had concerns with because, um, you know, the LAC and the JPA are now on the same level. And I don't know when that was formally approved. Some time ago, um, I know Mr. Palacios wanted the LAC to take more of a role in approving, you know, the details of policies. And uh, I believe uh, Susan said that it would require, you know, formally stating or changing that in the uh, fourth amendment, I think. So, you know, if there's been a change in the organization chart, when was that done? And um, what are the implications as far as the LAC assuming more of a role in uh, actually finalizing acceptance of policies? Thank you. Apparently you can't answer me. So that's just my statement. Thank you. Jean, your line is open, go ahead. Okay, can you hear me now? We can. Okay, well, this is happy Jean speaking to you. Uh, uh, everything is positive for me in this statement. Uh, first, I would, I'm most pleased to hear that there was some acknowledgement that that organizational chart uh, did need uh, taking a look at and that you're going to do that. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, uh, secondly, uh, I really, regarding the library services now, Susan and all of you, uh, we really appreciate even the reduced library services. We're regular library users. We have adapted to them. Grab and go is nice. Even before grab and go, it was good. Uh, everything is okay for us in terms of being able to access via online library materials and order them and they're ready and waiting for us. It's moving very smoothly. Um, we are using the Live Oak Library and we see at least a dozen other people who are there in line doing the same thing. So I know it's tough. It, I know it's difficult for the employees. The employees with whom we interact uh, across the, the lobby or um, out on the front, they are gracious, they are happy. It, it feels good. So I think uh, at least this portion of library services is working fine and we feel like we still have a library and I wanted to let you know that. The last positive thing I have to say is I had raised my hand during the Library Advisory Commission report, but I, I guess I didn't get it up in time. Uh, we attended the last Library Advisory Commission meeting and have nothing but accolades on this fine new, there's some new members. Uh, we were sorry about, very, very sorry about Bob White, but the last Library Commission meeting, and we've been attending them, our very first one was in December, uh, November of 2016. So we have attended a lot of Library Advisory Commissions. This one, it just, they just keep getting better and better. This commission is functioning greatly and we look forward to their um, being able to function also for you because they are for you, this board. So um, all, all, good, uh, all good feelings from me today to, to you. Thank you so much. And Chair Goldstein, I believe that ends public comment. Okay. Thank you for the public comments. I'll bring it back to the board for any further discussion or a motion. What's the will of the board this morning? So just to clarify, I think what's being asked of the board is to review and endorse the, this latest set of operational changes. Okay, in that case, I'm happy to make that motion um, that we uh, support the operational recommendations, this latest set um, presented today in this packet. And I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Can we have a roll call, please? Chair Member Goldstein. Aye. Vice Chair Bernal. Aye. Board Member Friend. Aye. And Board Member Palacios. Yes. Okay, so that motion carries unanimously. That takes us to item B on our general business this morning, which is the fiscal year 2021 budget update number three. We have a staff report, please. 
And I apologize, but I'm going to put Nicole Coburn on the spot for a moment. And um, we got a recent new LFA um, revenue update. I just want to remind people that the LFA represents um, the county, uh, the city of Scotts Valley, the city of Capitola in Watsonville, and does not include um, Santa Cruz. Um, but we have a new revenue uh, uh, record or update um, that exceeds our former forecast. And I thought Nicole could help us understand sort of the meaning of this, why it happened. Hi, uh, so good morning, everyone. Nicole Coburn, Assistant CAO. So I prepared the revenue update for the first quarter of the fiscal year for the LFA, the Library Financing Authority. And sales tax um, has come in much stronger um, than we originally projected. And that has all to do with very strong online sales. Um, a lot of us are at home and shopping and having things delivered to our houses rather than going to stores. So um, revenue for the first quarter was um, up quite a bit. Um, and so that impacted the revenue estimate for the year, which is now higher than what we originally projected. So um, it's coming in strong. Um, and um, I think we'll continue to see a little bit of growth um, for the rest of this year, and then maybe even into next fiscal year. Although with what's happening currently with another surge, you know, that could start to change things. So I'm still, um, you know, trying to monitor it and see what's going to happen in the second quarter. Um, you know, whatever, depending on what happens with any other actions the governor takes that may impact um, further closures, you know, we'll want to keep a close eye on how that impacts sales tax. But right now it's looking better for the library systems. And looking out at what we need to accomplish over the next six months, particularly in relationship to the building projects, I am requesting an additional $400,000 I would like $50,000 for collections. Um, in part, we uh, based our collection number based upon 8% of our anticipated revenue. And our original forecast uh, revenue based um, was significantly lower than past years. And so I would like about $50,000 to make sure that we have um, op appropriate opening day collections for Capitola and La Selva Beach. I would also like to hire um, temporary LA2s, which uh, is a sort of a clerk level position in our organization to help us manage um, the opening and closing of these libraries um, as we transition uh, Garfield Park, Branch 40, La Selva Beach, Capitola and Aptos branches over the next six months. Um, we do have to work with the unions. I know there's a lot of issues about how would this would um, work with furloughs and MOUs that we have agreed to within the city, but I believe we can work that out appropriately and um, have really great outcomes if we can get all of this accomplished over the next six months. So I am asking the board to approve a $400,000 uh, budget adjustment to the library's budget for collections and part-time staffing. Okay, thank you, Susan. Are there any questions, board members? I do have just one minor question on the, on the actual um, budget adjustment request. It looks like there's three listed out expenditures, regular part-time at 350, books and periodicals at 50,000 and then projects for books and periodicals, but it's blank. Is that, is that uh, an oversight or is that the way it's supposed to read? Can I ask Kira to respond? Yes, that's not an oversight. That is um, just a project that we track expenses by. So it's just budgeting that project, which is in that GL string. Okay, so you're not suggesting allocating any funding for it, but this is the way you add a project for your accounting, right. your enterprise accounting software. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I don't believe there are any questions from any other board members. And if not, then I would take it to the public, uh, moderator Jones, to see if there's any public comment. Chair Goldstein, we do have a public comment received by Cindy Jackson. She says, I wholeheartedly support the staff recommendation to approve an additional $400,000 to the SCPL budget for staffing and collections. The staff has been operating quite quote unquote thinly since staff cuts and the 10% furlough were instituted. The request from available funds to hire temporary staff to complete the many activities required to open close the branches seems very appropriate. That ends the public comment. I do not believe there are additional public comments at this time. Okay, thank you. I'll bring it back to the board for discussion. I'll uh, have a comment. Um, I, I know that uh, we've had lots of bad news uh, this year with the budget, uh, furloughs and um, laid off positions, frozen positions. Um, so this is a bit of good news, but it's just a bit, right? Unfortunately, um, I think it's uh, appropriate what you're asking for, Susan, in terms of staffing. It's good news that the revenues are a bit up. I know that um, the governor is a, has a scheduled a noon press conference for today, in which we'll hear more about what's going to happen in terms of operations for the next month or so. So uh, that could impact the economy as well. Um, but I do, um, you know, I'm thankful that revenues have been a little bit better than we anticipated even. So it's a bit of good news. The unfortunate thing is that we really haven't received as local governments or state um, stimulus money for general uh, backfill purposes in terms of our overall revenues. We've received specific money for the pandemic response, but unlike other industries, local government hasn't received uh, general stimulus money. And that's why we've had to make these cuts. It's very unfortunate. And I'm hopeful that in the new administration uh, that there will be discussions about general uh, revenue relief in the new year. And if that happens, uh, we will be able to re uh, in the future. So hopeful for that, thankful for the new, um, the good news of uh, our budget, but also knowing that we're still in very uncertain times. And as of noon, we will find out uh, what the new um, shelter in place uh, order will contain. Thank you, Susan, for your work on this. Uh, thank you, Carlos. Are there any other comments? Uh, a comment real quickly. Um, also, thank, thank you, uh, Susan, for your work on this and trying to balance, uh, trying to open up new facilities uh, in this environment. Uh, who knew we would be trying to do this all at the same time? It's a bit uh, unusual. In any case, it sounds like you've uh, come up with the balance here with respect to the temporary hours and the one-time kind of expenses. So there is some fiscal uh, flexibility there uh, because I think as, uh, as, as Carlos mentioned, uh, who knows what uh, can happen with the economy. We might get into a more severe uh, recession and uh, it might get uh, worse, uh, hopefully not. Uh, but in any case, uh, thank you very much and I, and I support the, uh, the recommendation. Thank you. And, and I want to make similar comments. Um, I think this is a plan that's scaled right and helps meet the real need that's out there because we're trying to get a lot done in really difficult circumstances and we don't have the resources now. And yeah, we had the good financial news. Who knows what's coming? But what's great about this plan is, again, we can just pull back. If we're finding that we're seeing indicators that concern us about our revenues, we can pull it back and we'll be able to sustain this year just fine. So I will be supporting this as well. And um, I'll go ahead and make a motion to support um, approving an additional $400,000 um, for the Santa Cruz Public Libraries for staffing and collections in anticipation of changes in service levels resulting from the remodeling and new constructions of branches. And I'll, I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, I would ask for a roll call vote, please. Chair Member Goldstein. Chair Member Goldstein. I did it too quickly. Aye. <laughs> Vice Chair Bernal. Aye. Board Member Friend. Aye. Board Member Palacios. Yes. Woohoo!
I'm sorry, my blood pressure went down. All right. So the motion carries unanimously. And I believe, because I'm trying to use a digital device to read the packet, that that takes us to the end of the agenda. It's oh, the no, calendar. it does not. We have one more. Yeah. So we do. We have our meeting calendar. And you will recall that we just set our meeting calendar for the LFFA earlier, which was to approve the calendar as proposed with the change uh, to move the 6 p.m. meeting start to, to um, 5 p.m. So is there any uh, any uh, uh, board questions on that? Seeing none, we'll take it. Is there any public comment, moderator Jones? Chair Goldstein, there are no public comments at this time. Okay, I'll bring it back to the board for discussion or a motion. I'll move approval of the annual meeting schedule with the proposed amendments to move the evening meetings to 5 p.m. Second. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call, please? Chair Member Goldstein. Aye. Vice Chair Burnell. Aye. Board Member Friend. Aye. And Board Member Palacios. Yes. OK, so that motion carries unanimously. We have our schedule for 2020. Um, and that will take us. Uh, I, just, I just want to say that um, at the next meeting, we will have to discuss in February maintenance of effort. Right, so that will be one of the items that's listed uh, for discussion. Uh, I, I can work with you, I think, on uh, setting the agenda and updating you on where those discussions are. Our next meeting is February 4th, 9 a.m. Uh, thank everyone for participating this morning. Um, with that, we will be adjourning to closed session. Thank you. I'm very grateful for the resources.